This um, is the this is the coveted piece here for solar. Yes, this allows you to go off grid. So okay. most people have most people that have solar just have solar. Right. Right. So they produce clean electricity, they consume clean electricity, and any excess production over consumption goes back out to the grid. And right. It's called net metering. So when you have a battery, that excess mm. production over top of consumption goes into the battery, and it charges the battery so that it can discharge later when you need it. Most of your solar is being produced during the day when mm. no one's home. <laughs> so you right. don't need that energy right then and there. You're selling it back to the energy company at a discount, especially if you have those variable rates. But by having this, you're, you're, this is a game changer. Hey guys, welcome to the American Contractor Show. I'm John Dye, and today we're with David Silverstein, owner of American Home Contractors out here in Maryland. David, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks for showing us these cool cars and everything else you got going on. So uh, I'm looking around here, and obviously you're a huge Tesla fan. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love Tesla products. They're, uh, they're pretty amazing. And so you've got the Model X over here, the Model uh, 3, Yep. These are two uh, two of the flagship models for Tesla. Some of the coolest cars, and I think everyone watching has probably seen a Tesla on the road up until now. They're, these are pretty uh, they're pretty much everywhere now, right? Uh, yeah, they're becoming more popular. You see more and more of them on the roads. And sure. the whole electric vehicle thing is becoming hugely popular. Uh, yeah. A lot of other brands are coming out with new stuff, and so Tesla is doing some really cool stuff. But you've got something really unique that you're working on. Absolutely. Yes, the Tesla solar roof. That's cool, man. And we're standing here at your house. You've got a Tesla solar roof that you've already installed up here on your roof. Yep. That's really cool. And I'd like to kind of learn a little bit more about that, but you're also installing solar roofs for other people as well, right? Yeah, as many people as we can in the markets we serve. So very few contractors have up until now installed a solar roof. Um, how many have you guys put on so far? Uh, seven so far, and we have another half a dozen in the pipeline right now. That's amazing. Yep. Um, and you were just, you guys were shingle contractors, roofing contractors, general contractors for before this, right? Yeah, primarily asphalt shingle roofing was what we were doing. So let's talk about that transition real quick. So you went from being an asphalt roofing contractor to now you guys are installing Tesla, or Tesla solar roofs. That's a, that's a huge deal. Yeah, it's a big transition. Yeah, yeah. Well, what was that like? Uh, it was a lot of hard work, um, you know, a lot of research, a lot of learning, a lot of online training, a lot of communication back and forth with Tesla. But, you know, it's, it's paying off. You know, it's something that took us over the course of last year to kind of figure out how to install the roofs, how to design them using, you know, software and Tesla's expert engineers over in California, working close hand in hand with them and being able to sell and install it to the market, yeah, it's just been great. And you're clearly a believer in Tesla and their products. So you're bought into it, um, but so how did you start with them? Like, How did that process unfold? Uh, actually, I first bought the Model 3 back in December, 2019. Okay. And I always looked at it as a very cool car, but yeah. I never really understood the meaning of Tesla. I mean, Tesla's mission is to accelerate the transition of sustainable energy. And that's just so powerful. You know, they're not trying to be the biggest, largest company on this planet. They're trying to do good. Right. And, you know, they're starting off through the vehicles because over 15% of the greenhouse gases that are out there are emitted through transportation. And they're trying to target that market first. And that's a good segue into going green in general. So I started with the Model 3, bought that in 2019. And then I thought, you know, this is a great car. This is the technology inside of it is amazing. I mean, yeah. just every single Tesla product is phenomenal. And you can tell that a lot of craftsmanship, a lot of engineering goes into every single product they make. And after we purchased the car, I was thinking, all right, well, I think now it's time to go solar, you know, because this is step one and I want to produce clean electricity so that I can charge the car from clean electricity. and reduce my carbon footprint and one of the best ways that you can reduce your carbon footprint is going with the Tesla solar roof. Yeah, it's pretty amazing roof and I, and I'm a huge fan of Elon Musk and what they're doing. I, that's probably the 
I listen to the Joe Rogan stuff just to listen to Elon Musk half the time because I think those are some of the best episodes they have and his mind is amazing and it's so fascinating to listen to the way he speaks about all the things that he's so passionate about. Um, but this this product, you know, and the cars are amazing. We've we spent a little bit of time in them. I told you I was when you pulled out that Model X, I was like just my wallet got lighter because I was automatically thinking this is my wife's next car. <laughs> so um, and I, it will I'm, be if you go for a test drive. I, I keep fighting it, man. I keep <laughs> fighting it, but uh, I'm pretty sure that that's what we're gonna end up with. But you know, thinking about the 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 whole system and the processes and what that company's all about, I mean. And in terms of being a roofing contractor, this is a huge undertaking for them because, I mean, people think, oh, it's just a roof, but it's really a lot more than a roof. And taking that technology and building it into solar tiles, that's probably that's probably been fun. And you've been kind of watching that transition. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we went through the online training, just looking at the roofing system in general. It's like a completely different language. It's yeah. not like anything else that's out there. You know, obviously there's flashing components, there's similarities, right, that you can understand more as a roofer than maybe a solar company. But at the end of the day, they take a ground up first principles approach to thinking and how should this roof be designed that so that it can produce clean electricity. I mean, that's their thought process and it's just amazing to see what the end result is. I, I think it's really cool. And, and you said something earlier too when we were talking about the roof and talking about the systems that you know there's they've gone through all these beta tests because this isn't really like the final product yet like they're still working on this right i mean there's always going to be iterations right okay. they're always going to optimize and improve on the products and that's including the cars you know yeah. the cars they get updated through software that's why this vehicle today is different than when i first purchased it that's so crazy to think yeah about. and it's that's like... why you know owning a tesla is completely different than any other car because this constantly updates it constantly gets smarter and hopefully full self-driving is right around the corner and then the value of these vehicles will <laughs> be way up. So let's talk about those little, those iterations with the roof though so far and talk a little bit about how up until now it's it's been different than what it was when you, because you saw this roof what, a year ago you said? Uh, yes, well not quite a year. This was installed back in November and okay. it was turned on in January. Wow, so it so takes it's a while pretty new to turn. still. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty new. We've installed, um, like I said, seven solar roofs so far. All of them have been turned on between December and February of this past year. And the revisions they're making with the roof are just, you know, to make it more efficient. Aesthetically, it's gonna look very similar to where it is right now. And this right. is not, just for the record, this is not a beta product. This is for the masses, this is mainstream. So this is on the market now. You can go and buy a Tesla roof today. Absolutely. Okay. You can go on Tesla's website, or if there's a certified installer in your area, you can reach out to them directly, get pricing, have them design the roof of your choice. And there's a lot of advantages to that. You know, working with the certified installer, we're able to do things that Tesla directly is not able to do like relocate pipes so that you can fit more photovoltaic tiles. Right. Yeah, you know, that's huge. Um, doing the gutters. A lot of times when you do a solar roof project, replacing the gutters is, you know, it should be a big consideration because you have to remove them to install this product. Right. So like I said, it's very different than any other roofing product out there. Um, some of the other revisions they're making, it's just, again, mainly for efficiencies, making sure that we can drive the labor price down because that's the biggest, um, cost driver in the roofing system is the labor. It right. takes a while. This roof, um, if we went back with traditional asphalt shingles, it would take on average one day, right? Most roofing contractors who are confident at roofing would tear off, dry in, and replace the roof in one day. This roof took seven days, start to finish, wow. for the installation process. And then you have the batteries, you have the inverters, the electrical hookups, so it's a process, but it's well worth it. Um, it's a roof that produces clean electricity, and it's what I would consider a smart roof and not a dumb roof. And you know? aesthetically, it's beautiful. It's oh, a gorgeous roof. I think so. Yeah. Most people think so, I, you know? Yeah, I Cost totally aside, so. most people, I think, would prefer to have this than anything else on the market. Yeah, it's so different. So, well, let's take a look at it, and uh, we'll uh, get some more feedback from you on it. Okay, cool. sounds good. So this is what a completed Tesla roof looks like and it's beautiful out here. I mean, the property's gorgeous and the house is amazing and it's really cool to see one of these roofs actually in person. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so this is the uh, Tesla solar roof fully installed. 
Um, it was a few month long process between designing it, right? So before you install the Tesla solar roof, you have to consider the design and the complexity. So with my roof, you have valleys, you have rakes, you have walls, you have undershots, you have aprons. You got a lot going on. Yeah, this on. roof has just about everything. Yeah. Yeah, minus hips. Yeah, it's yeah, got minus a lot hips, going on up yeah. there. But you can tell that all that has to be designed for and the tiles have to fit perfectly on the mounting planes. So we try to fit as many photovoltaic tiles as we can on the roof. And the photovoltaic tiles cannot touch metal. So okay. whenever there's an obstruction or a penetration, we have to put glass tiles around it and then metal flashing that touches the glass tiles. So you can see, you know, if you look carefully, on the edge of the roof, there's rake trim, right. and that's metal. The rake trim butts up against glass tile, right, which has a stagger up the roof, and that stagger goes into the photovoltaic tiles, which are about 45 inches wide. Okay. We run as many of them as we can, keeping the lines straight, and once we reach the wall, then we have to do glass tiles before we do the step flashing as well. Right. And this roof is essentially a roof over top of a roof. So there is deck level flashing and underlayments that is underneath of this tile system. And okay. That's, that's for the weatherization, which is a 25 year warranty through Tesla, right? Production warranty is 25 years and the inverter warranty is 12 and a half. So it is a very good warranty. It's in, really, in the industry. it's really pretty gorgeous though. The way that it looks, uh, I've never seen a roof system quite like this before and, and the engineering behind it, it's gotta be pretty intense. Um, you said it took several months to even get to the point of actually having the roof put on, right? Yeah, well, I mean, it takes a few weeks to go back and forth and do the design process. Right. Um, and that's mainly because of the backlog with Tesla. You know, okay. All their products are in high demand. There's never really a demand constraint. It's always a production constraint. <laughs> um, so back and forth with the designers, making sure that we account for all the photovoltaic tiles we can put on the roofing system. Right, we have to measure out the obstructions. There's a lot that goes into it. It's a lot more than just simply tearing a roof off and putting a new roof back on. So and sun's just, hitting this right now. You're producing energy for your house. Yep. Right. Let's uh, let's go inside and look at where this energy actually goes. Sounds good. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. So these are the inverters, and Tesla has its own inverter right now which okay. is something that I wish I could swap out. Maybe I'll do it eventually, but yeah. So these are the Delta inverters that came with my system. And the strings come through the attic up there, right? Coming down, this is direct current, so it's gotta be encased in conduit, right? They come in here, there are a few strings here, a few strings here that are on the roof. And this is the inverter, it's showing a green status that everything's working properly. Right, and this converts direct current into alternate current, which then goes into the home, and that's what the home uses for electricity. This is like, because there's different versions of this, right? Like there's some that plug in right directly to your 110, then there's this one, this is the yep. big one, right? The rapid charger? Yes, this is the wall charger. Yep. How long does it take you to charge your car? Uh, it's about 40 mi 45 miles per hour. Okay. Charge rate, so a few hours. So what, four or five hours? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like plug it in your phone at night. Yeah, You get exactly. home, you plug it in, you're good to go. Yeah, drive home, plug it in, you're good to go the next morning. Yeah. You can actually schedule charging if you have a variable rate through the utility company, right? Okay. So if the utility yeah. company charges you more in the evening versus the morning, you can schedule it, you know, to come on at 2 a.m. Right. You're producing power up there on the roof, and it's coming down, and this is where most people, they don't have this part. Correct. But this um, is the this is the coveted piece here for solar. Yes, this allows you to go off grid. So okay. most people have most people that have solar just have solar. Right. Right. So they produce clean electricity, they consume clean electricity, and any excess production over consumption goes back out to the grid. And it's right. called net metering. Right. Right. So when you have a battery, that excess production over top of consumption goes into the battery and it charges the battery so that it can discharge later when you need it. Right, which you think about it, most of your solar is being produced during the day when no one's home. <laughs> so you don't need that energy right then and there. You're selling it back to the energy company at a discount, especially if you have those variable rates, mm -hmm. right? 
But by having this, you're, you're, this is a game changer. Total game changer. So how does all this yep. work? So you have the gateways, right? There's the two gateways. This system right here, this one power wall, backs up this panel, which contains the lighter loads, 30 amps and less. Okay. All right. So if you were to get one battery, you wouldn't be able to back up everything. You need right. at least two or three. So that's why we went with three. So this battery backs up this lighter load panel, and then it operates to this, this gateway. This is like your day-to-day -day stuff, essentially. Lights, the Lights, refrigerator, stuff. minor loads. Right. Right. Here is the heat pump and all the bigger loads. Mechanicals. Up here. Yes. Yeah. Bigger loads are in this panel, operating through this gateway and these two power wall batteries. So okay. right now, if you look on the side, you see a green light, and the green light. When it flashes, it indicates that it's either charging or discharging. Okay. In this case, these two batteries are charging. This battery is not. So we must be consuming something over there where, you know, we're, we're producing clean electricity, but we're consuming it, mm -hmm. right? And we might even be pulling from the grid. Get the lights on. on that <laughs> yeah, we have the lights. Yeah. On this side of things, though, we're not charging the electric vehicles. We're not doing any heavy lifting right now. So right now, we're I'm assuming we're producing more than we're consuming and then it's dumping into these batteries to charge them up. You know, getting involved with this, you try to produce as much as you can, right? And the utility company actually regulates the size system that you can put on your home. So in a lot of cases, you can't put over maybe 125% or 150% of your consumption, right? The utility company just says, no, you can't have a system that large. We were able to get someone approved for 200%. Okay. of their consumption. So that gives them room to grow, room to get electric vehicle, change from an oil furnace to a heat pump that's electric, right? Electrify everything. That's mm -hmm. the goal and that's where everything's headed. So we want to have room for growth. So we try to size the system appropriately as much as we can. Based on that system size, you're going to consume as long as you pay attention to your consumption versus your production. Yes, you could the theoretically stay off the grid, mm -hmm. but there's always a chance that you're going to be consuming a lot more than you're producing and maybe even that you have stored up in the batteries depending on what time of day it is so it is nice to be connected to the grid and have that opportunity to pull yeah. from it if you needed to plus being tied to the grid allows the power walls to enter storm watch mode storm watch mode it's a monitoring system with the national weather service and if there's a storm warning in your area the power walls will charge themselves up to 100 percent using electricity from the grid and that way if and when the power goes out from the storm you can rely on the batteries to discharge and provide that clean electricity to your home you can monitor that all through an app i guess right yeah through the to the tesla app you can monitor the production the consumption the batteries charging discharging there's different modes there's time variability mode if you're on a time variability system with the utility company right. um, there's storm watch mode in there you can actually set how much you want the uh, power walls to charge down to or discharge. So like if I set them at 20%, they'll never go below 20% when they're discharging. So that way overnight, I got 20% in these batteries and I got 20% in that battery, just in case, you know, even without a storm warning, the grid can go down, obviously. So if right. the grid goes down overnight and I have 20% stored up, at least I can use some electricity until the next day when the sun comes back out, charges, the batteries throughout the day and then life goes on in a sustainable manner and the other day uh, we actually lost power we were unaware of it um, we saw a flicker just kept going on with what we were doing you know watching tv having a few lights on the refrigerator and all that good stuff and it wasn't until a few minutes later when i looked at the app that i realized that we were off grid you saw the grid xed out and you saw the batteries discharging into the home and we were consuming that electricity that was stored in the batteries meanwhile all the other neighbors were left without power the grid was down and that's the great thing about the batteries it allows you to go off grid because without these you cannot go off grid because if you're going to produce more than you consume without a battery that electricity needs to go back to the grid it needs the net meter yeah and if somebody's working on those lines because there's an outage there's a risk that someone will get injured right if you send that electricity back so it has to shut down the entire system a lot of people don't realize that when people have solar panels and the grid goes out you go out as well right without a battery and you can see right now the uh, green lights are flashing which means they're charging which is wonderful okay i see it. it's like it's like going up and down like it's like breathing <laughs> yeah that is 
beautiful clean electricity going into the power walls and charging them up right now so that we can use that electricity for later in the evening. That's really cool. I'm excited to see one of these roofs actually installed though. That's like the contractor and me coming out. There's gonna, um, you know, we're gonna get to go see one tomorrow in Virginia and uh, actually get to spend some time with the homeowner and, and see this roof being put on. It's gonna be really cool. So we'll- oh, uh, it's gonna be fun. Let's go check that out tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. All right guys, so it is day two of our Tesla shoot and we are on an actual Tesla install with uh, David and Michael Gogan has joined us from Company Cam. What's up guys? What's going on? How you doing? It's good to be out here in Virginia and getting to check out how these Tesla roofs get installed is gonna be really amazing. So I'm really excited that we get to do this. Um, walk us through what's going on today. All right, so we are on day three of this project and day one and two, we spent drying, tearing everything off and drying it in. Today we're installing the tiles and we're focusing on the flashing details and yeah, let's get let's head up on the roof and we can show you guys what's going on. Let's do it. One of the most important tools that forward-thinking contractors like American Home Contractors are using is an app called Company Cam. American Home Contractors uses Company Cam to document the job progress in real time using their easy to use app. They can easily snap the photos and instantly upload them directly to the project and share that feed with their customers, vendors, partners like Tesla, or anyone else that needs those photos. Tesla has actually used the Company Cam project feed to monitor the quality of the project and make sure that everything is being installed to the proper specifications, all in real time. If you'd like to learn more about Company Cam and to sign up for a free trial, simply use the link in this video's description. We know you'll enjoy using Company Cam, because we sure do. All right, so we're here with David Voss. David, this is your home, and uh, you're getting the Tesla roof installed right now. And I kind of wanted to touch base with you a little bit and understand why you chose a ch uh, this type of roof system and the importance of it for you as a consumer at the end of the day on this project. <laughs> I mean, it's a kind of a big question, <laughs> but it really flowed out of what we're doing in our foundation and the work we're doing for reducing humans' carbon, carbon footprint in the atmosphere, which is a big, big deal. It's, it's highly measurable. It's a problem we really need to solve. And at the same time, as we're launching tree planting all around the world and we're chasing a trillion trees, which is one of which is the big driver for our foundation work, we wanted to put our money where our mouth is here as well. So right here on the farms, I mean, we have horses and we consume energy at, at a crazy rate. Um, even though we have 140,000 trees, it's not enough. So we decided um, as we were coming to sort of the 20 year time frame on the, on the roof, let's put a solar roof in. And um, I've um, been watching Tesla all these years and did some work with Elon many years ago. And so it's always been on my mind that the Tesla roof is a really good, elegant answer. And when I connected with them and to make sure the product is ready for the consumer place now, and the answer was yes, I was like, okay, let's do this. So it's really, it's really not only, you know, trying to make a real difference in the world with our foundation work, but make it really local right here and get ourselves off the grid, so to speak, and, and you know, heating the pool and paying the you know, HVAC cooling bills and heating bills and so on, and as well as all the work around the farm that's so energy intensive, let that come from solar. And to the extent we can do this as a, with a really nice looking roof, I mean, it's perfect. We'd yeah. like to you know, try to push that message out to the world. So let's talk about your foundation for a minute, because you said that this all goes hand in hand and ties completely into what your mission is and what you guys are trying to accomplish. Yeah. Um, that's something that as contractors, providing a solution like this could really start to help yeah. further that, that cause as well, which has to do with the climate and carbon and all the other things. But I'll let you ex talk about that a little bit. Sure thing. I mean, so the, I mean, I think this is a great platform, a contract community, because 
that's what's building America, right? Right, yeah. One step at a time, literally, every day in and out. I mean, it's a phenomenal opportunity to, to push this message, which is since the beginning of the industrial age, we have put, we've gone from about 280 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the air to 420 today. And that's having huge impacts on everything around the world, and, and everyone knows the issues related to that. But this is very measurable. We can measure, and NASA does this, as well as many other scientific agencies, measures how much carbon is in the, in the air every year, and we can correlate the impact. And we are now in territory that humans have never been in before, and a lot of the life forms on Earth have never been in before. And uh, so we really need to do something about it. And the foundation, my wife and I started around 2018 thinking about what can we do. Really, we started from the point of view of poaching, because where I grew up in Africa, poaching is a real problem. And we learned pretty quickly Poaching is driven mostly by people needing to put food on the table for their families. They're not animal haters and they're not wanting to destroy. So the poaching problem was the big driver for me personally because that's where I grew up in South Africa. And when I was a kid there, there were half a million lions and today it's you know, 20,000 left in the world. And this is just completely unacceptable. So that sort of was the, the genesis of how do we help the poaching problems in the world and how do we help find a way for humans and animals to coexist and, and that we don't destroy each other. And then long story short, it's basically the intersection of, of highly impoverished parts of the world needing work, helping to address alternatives to poaching to solve that issue. And then this real problem with carbon in the air. Those three things intersect in one place and that is plant a trillion trees. And if we can put a trillion more trees into the ground by 2030, that's one more tree for every three that's in, on Earth today. We will basically neutralize the 37 trillion uh, kilograms of carbon dioxide that humans put into the air every year. And it gives us this bridge for, from today to three, two, three, four decades into the future where we can get humanity on Earth to transition to a sustainable energy future. It's just a wonderful story. And, it, and, it, and in the process, for the cost of around $100 billion once, we can plant a trillion trees because it costs us 10 cents or less in the impoverished parts of the world to get trees planted. That will manage to, to hold the carbon dioxide level fairly constant for the next several decades. We bring online the, the um, uh, renewable energy and then those extra trees will have four trillion back th by, th by then, hopefully, will draw down the carbon content in the atmosphere and get it back down to the pre-industrial revolution age levels so that there's a real sustainable known uh, domain of how much carbon is in the air that life can exist in and do really well. And the, the great thing that comes as a, as a co-benefit here is people living in communities, say for example in Mozambique where we launched with Eden Projects tree planting, they build their communities, they have jobs, the trees grow, their carbon co is traded on the carbon credit markets in every year. That money goes back into those communities for paying them to keep the trees alive, so managing and maintaining those forests, and planting more trees. But the real benefit is they undergo socioeconomic growth and transformation. We can address this issue with a, a here and now solution that's guaranteed to work. Yeah. It's the one that works every day. The three trillion trees that are out there today are the ones that basically provide our, our atmosphere um, and try to keep it roughly in equilibrium today. Yeah. So this opportunity is, you know, one more tree for every three, getting, it, getting them into the ground by 2030, and then we have this many decades long bridge to the future of a sustainable energy planet. It's so exciting. It's very exciting, and it's awesome what you guys are doing, your foundation. Um, you know, you couple that with your solar roof and the initiatives that we've got going on now and, and the changes happening throughout our industry and, and many industries like ours, yeah. there's a lot of great things to look yeah. forward to. Um, how do people get a hold of your foundation and how can you be a part of that? So the foundation is the Voss Foundation, V-O-S, just one S. Okay. The Voss Foundation.org, it's one, all, all together one word. And there's, there's some presentation on there you can take a look at. It describes this whole story, it shows the carbon footprint, it shows the measurements NASA has done, it shows um, the intersection of these three domains and, and of course there's a donate button there that will move money straight from you know you go and have a Starbucks or you go to the local grocery store and you can just add one more buck that'll plant 10 trees the money goes straight to planting 10 trees uh, at various locations around the world and we can get onto this game really really pronto and get those trees into the ground 
I mean, the, basically all we need today is scaling. We need to scale up from the few hundreds of millions of trees that are getting planted every year. We need to get 100 billion trees into the ground every year for the next decade, uh, net. So including, you know, the, the extras that are needed for the, the, the forest that are going to burn down. If we get there by 2030, it at least puts us in a really well-defined, understood, uh, historically understood domain for humanity to continue into the future. And um, that that work is is basically what we're doing right now. My wife and I are retired, and we run the foundation, and that's what we're that's what we want to get accomplished: a trillion trees that's uh, by 2030. And it's completely doable. And the community, the jobs that come with transition to renewable energy, th this is a no-brainer. They're they're better, more better paying, uh, and with the right mission than the current flavor. So why not go there? Yeah. And the, as I said a minute ago. Contracting community is literally what's building this country and building the world. The front line. Yeah, it's, a, it's what makes the things happen. Yeah. And so it's, there's no better community to, to get this message into everyone's DNA. Every day, everyone in the, on the planet, I'm a citizen of planet Earth, I need to make sure we can get to a trillion trees by 2030. Right? And I'm going to donate my 10 cents because that's a tree in the ground today. Yeah. No, it's, it's just so easy for us to do. And the is no, we don't have to go and develop and invent crazy technology, we have payments platforms, we have the web, we have our phones, we can move those dollars quickly with one little click and to a tree in the ground in these areas around the world and so <laughs> make the make yeah. the world of difference, literally. It's so simple, yeah. the way you put it, compared to what we normally hear. Yeah. This complex problem yeah. that we can't figure out, but yeah. you guys have made it so simple and it's yeah. exciting to hear. I mean, all we're doing is telling the story. Nature made it so simple. Yeah. And nature went through many iterations to get here, but this is, this is the exciting thing about what we're doing. It's so cool, and we'll make sure to, uh, in the link here, in the description, we'll put the link okay. for uh, all those options for you, for you to donate and to learn more about yeah. the Voss Foundation and what yeah. you guys are doing. And uh, thank you for letting us uh, hang out on your oh, yeah, roof pleasure. And, <laughs> and take a look at what's going on here. It's beautiful property out here. <laughs> and, and it's always uh, an honor to meet great people like you. So thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, great sir. to meet you guys. Tesla is revolutionizing the way we look at energy today. And the true mission is simple. Harness the energy of the sun to create clean, sustainable energy for the masses. By partnering with contractors like American Home Contractors, they're helping accelerate their mission, install more clean energy products, and ultimately helping to preserve our environment. Our industry is uniquely positioned to make a significant impact in helping to make the world a brighter place for generations to come. Now is the time for your business to get involved in providing alternative energy options to your customers. Thanks so much for watching today's show. Make sure to like and subscribe our pages so that you can stay up to date with every episode. And by the way, this show is all about you, the American contractor. Be sure to comment, let us know what you wanna hear about and what subjects you want us to touch on. We'll be sure to include them in a future episode. Thanks again and I hope you have a great day.